Hi, welcome to our podcast. It's What Did I Miss? Which I think is a pretty obvious reason for naming it because I have been out of any sort of workforce situation for well over two years. Um, and in that time, I think I missed a bit, but we thought, why not podcast? Because if the world needs anything right now, anything to bring us all together, it's one more podcast. And I was willing to take that hit. So here we are. Um, I ended up at The Athletic because when I think serious journalism, I think athletic and myself. And to me, it was just... Um, a match made in heaven. And to be honest with you, after I left my last gig, I had one rule and it was to do what I want with people I like. And that was it. Uh, no more jerks. So here we are. I think I like everyone that I'm about to do this with. That remains to be seen, guys. <laughs> We're going to find out. Gabe and Paige there, um, ready to chime in or cut me off or tell me what I'm doing is completely wrong, which I'm okay with, guys. Well, I, I'm surprised you're about 45 seconds into your new podcast and you've already violated one rule, which was don't work with jerks. And somehow you ended up with the two of us. So this is off to a hell of a start. Well, in my defense, I didn't know I was working with jerks the last time I worked with jerks until it was too late. <laughs> Secret jerks. I'm one so, of the yeah. jerks you used to work with. You I know. Well, you and you are case. not. You were on the clear list, which, you know, you're like TSA clear. You can just walk right through. You still have a pass. Paige, on the other hand... Remains to be seen. That. Yeah, this could be a disaster. Um, we're going to find out together during this podcast, which is not live. So technically anything goes, which I think is a good thing. And the show is going to, we're going to try to do three of these a week. I'm told that's a lot um, by people who know better than I do, but I don't think it will be because I think we're going to try to have fun Fridays. Mondays are pretty self-explanatory, especially during football season. There's a lot to talk about. And Wednesdays, I don't know. I guess that's the wild card. What are we, are we going to make stuff up for Wednesdays? Is that the plan, guys? Yes. I think it is. Okay, that's what we're going to do. I didn't have Wednesdays marked down in my calendar, so I'm going to work on that. We got to come up with something. Okay, yeah. We're going to come up with something um, <laughs> because it's just a bizarre thing to do. People, please follow. If you want to tweet your ideas, somebody will definitely see them. Um, if you want to tweet your critiques, somebody also will probably see those. Not myself. I've taken myself out of the cesspool years ago, but... Luckily, my ego is so fragile that I can't see negative comments anymore, and I'm going to have to let somebody else just kind of wade through that nastiness. But here we are. Uh, I've missed a lot. I'm excited to get back to work. I've sort of been sitting back for 800 days giving my opinions to walls because my friends don't care about sports, and nor does my family, and nobody really cared what I had to say. So in between knitting and buying toilet paper, I was just mumbling a lot of opinions into the ether. And so now I get to share them with at least maybe two or three of you guys that will be tuning into this podcast on a regular basis. To get things started, I thought it'd be kind of weird or fun or stupid or nice to go through everything that I missed. And when I sat down to do this... Um, it was kind of nuts because if you say two years, doesn't seem like a lot. And then you start to go through the internet to remember what two years has been. Let's just go ahead and stipulate, yes, we had a pandemic. I'm not an idiot. That is the top of the list. That is what I had been missing as I was not in the workforce. However, this is a list of all of the things, sports related, pop culture related. I try to stay out of politics because God knows that worked last time. Um, and so we're gonna we're gonna go through. I just want to read off some of the stuff that I missed because it's it's a lot. And I have to start with Christopher Nolan and the movie Tenet, which I still refuse to watch because it was teased for so long. And then when it finally came out, the it just wasn't received very well. And I love John David Washington, but Tenet that came and went. Nobody knows, myself included. Bridgerton, fantasies of housewives and myself blew up. The entire nation blew up. Thank you so much for that. The U.S. women won a World Cup. That happened while I was sitting on my butt. Uh, we had an Area 51 RSVP explosion. If you don't know what that is, then you're not a nerd, but you should because I loved it. Um, we had a Lady Gaga, Bradley Cooper film. I want to withhold my Lady Gaga acting critique until a later date because the Gucci movie, I think, is really going to cement what I think about it. Anyways, people thought they had actual chemistry. Uh, Uncut Gems is where we got to see Kevin Garnett truly kill it as what should have been an Oscar-winning performance playing himself, but a grimy version. Uh, Pete Davidson. This one, I think... The dude dates the hottest chicks. Um, and during the time that I was gone, dated Kate Beckinsale, the chick from The Maid, Cindy Crawford's little girl. The girl from Bridgerton, and like it keeps going on and on. Baby Yoda, uh, the movie Cats, we'll just leave it at that. Uh, Megan and Harry, Megxit. Murder Hornets, that was a thing that I actually thought was a joke. 
Uh, Tiger King, I refuse to watch. Mr. Peanut was a Super Bowl ad campaign that they started way, way ahead of time and then ended up being Baby Nut. Uh, We had a couple of Super Bowls. Bond, No Time to Die, delayed a few times. NBA was delayed. The Masters were delayed. The Olympics were postponed. Something happened in a bubble, and I guess the Lakers won that, if you want to count that. Um, The Pentagon Pentagon gave us US UFO videos, which I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I do believe that there's something else out there. And finally, we had some sort of video form the government let us see, which is weird. Kanye ran for president. Quibi, that came and went. Washington football team dropped its name after a million years. The state of Texas froze. I learned how to knit, and then I stopped caring about how to knit. I bought toilet paper. This one was big. Um, The NFL, like, I don't think they get enough credit for this, or or maybe people just moved on too quickly, but they actually ended racism uh, when they painted end racism on the field. And, you know... Nobel Peace Prize and whatnot, it just doesn't seem to be getting the credit that they deserve. Aunt Becky went to prison, might be my favorite one. Uh, Borat was back. Michael Jordan gave us another meme. And for a man who probably doesn't really care or know what memes are, it's the best. Cranberry Juice Dude, you remember him. Tom Brady left the Patriots, which I didn't care about at the time. But then watching him sort of blossom into his own man with opinions and carefree attitude and more commercials than one person should be allowed has been eye-opening. Um, do I like Tom Brady? Maybe I do. Maybe when he's not a patriot, he's more likable. Uh, he was drunk in public. like Not that I condone that, but I also don't condemn it if you're Tom Brady. Rudy Gobert uh, <laughs> blew up the NBA in one tiny little press conference. Um we talked about bubble meals, which I thought was weird, very much Fire Island kind of stuff. Was it Fire Island? It wasn't Fire Island. What was that called? Fire Fest? Fire Festival? Fire Fest, yeah. Fire. With a Y? Oh, yeah. And two that docs, guy's in prison. Two documentaries. Right? Oh, yes. The guy that was in charge of getting the water. That's right. God bless him. him. Uh, we had a remote NFL draft, which who cares? Um, 17 season, the 17 game football season has now become a thing, which was talked about my entire life. So here we are. We lost Kobe Bryant and his daughter and a lot of other people uh, on that one helicopter. Um, Aaron Rodgers. We got this whole vaccine thing going on. Aaron Rodgers lied about it, doesn't have it. Kyrie Irving doesn't want to get it. Look, I'm just going to say this right off the bat. I don't I don't really care what your stance is on it. I, I just don't think you should lie ever because nothing ever good comes out of that. Um, we have the Jake Paul and Logan Paul fiasco that is now the cash grab boxing world. And I have now purchased, I think, three of those fights. <laughs> I hate myself so much. Uh, Manny Pacquiao retired. That, no one cared. And there was so much more. The biggest thing that happened is that I, after three years of not watching NFL football, um, I decided to start watching NFL football again. I think the one thing that I did the first chapter of my career was I was very black and white, and I lived in the black and white, and I still do in a lot of ways. If I don't like someone or if I don't like something, it's very hard for me to come back from that. But I realized I need to sort of stay in the gray a little more. Um, There's still bad stuff that happens in everything. There are still bad people. There are still people I don't like. Jerry Jones, of course, always being one of them. But I'm enjoying watching football again. It was like being an alien dropped on the planet and starting a brand new observation period. And it's exciting and it's fun. And I had to relearn a lot. And in doing so, I've now joined fantasy football again. And I've stayed, uh, what are we, week 10? I'm still in it. This is the longest I've ever stayed in a season of fantasy football. I usually quit by now. Pretty proud of myself. I'm about to be 500 on the season, which is huge. Um, and so, yeah, I think the biggest thing was watching football's back. And I know that that's king. And I know I got ripped apart for people seem to think that's why I left ESPN. It's not. Uh, there were a variety of other reasons. But watching football again has not been the worst thing I've done. And I'm Gabe, you've known me the longest, obviously, on this. Are you shocked that I have managed to somehow find myself into a gray zone versus black and white. Yes, I, I, I was going to say, this is the biggest growth that I've witnessed is what I thought once people are dead to you, they're dead to you. And I thought the NFL was buried. I thought it was yeah. over for them. They, well, the thing about saying that was, okay, look, when I said it, I had very good reason to say, it. I still believe that, you know, Colin Kaepernick was blackballed and has remained so. And I still think there are bad agents throughout the sport like in anything. Um, but I also re- realized that not everyone's a bad person, that the game itself is very entertaining. I did not realize how much I missed having Red Zone on 
on a Sunday, just on, like through the house, walking around, doing stuff, watching it. It is the greatest invention in sports television, I think, this entire time. And I know they get a lot of credit because what they pull off every Sunday is a huge feat. Um, But it's just so good. Uh, You know, no offense to the individual game broadcast, but (laughs) who has time? (laughs) Um, And so that has been kind of enlightening. I also think my Friends that do like sports are happy that I'm back watching football because for three years, not only was I not watching football, but I was judging those that were. (laughs) Like, oh, how cute. You're still watching football. And I know, Paige, you're you're like the football guru of this group right now. Can be. Yeah. yeah, so at first I was like, oh, I'm just going to let Paige. But no, I am I can now talk football with you again. Welcome. Uh, everybody. I know. I feel pretty good about it. Having made I want to know – I do want to know more about uh, fun Tom Brady though because when you said I like Tom Brady now, Gabe's face was like he I know. ate six lemons at one time. Yeah. Well, hold on. It's not like I want to be hanging out with him or anything like that. But you have to admit we got very used to sort of – the Bill Belichick version of Tom Brady, which is um, robot Brady. Yeah, it's like the Yankees, right? Like everybody sort of operates in a certain way. Um, he really wasn't. I don't know that he was comfortable or not comfortable, but he wasn't interested, I guess, in sort of opening up or sharing or showing much personality. There's a real robotic sense of being, I think, under a Bill Belichick team. And then as soon as he left, a he left, which that's huge. But it was like. He realized, A, you're Tom freaking Brady. You have all the money in the world, all the success in the world. Your life from the outside looking in seems to be pretty much perfect. You should be having more fun than anybody else in any room that you ever enter. And I think for the first time we're seeing that. Um, and the drunk version of him was sort of everything wrapped up in one moment. I mean, when's, did we ever see Tom Brady? How many times have we seen him winning things? I've never seen him like that. Have Tequila y'all? Tom? Don't know. Never seen it. I don't need to ever see it again. I'm done seeing it. I've seen it a handful of times and I'm sick of it already. And I, so the guy gets drunk off a few distilled avocados and suddenly that makes up for two decades of being the worst. Like, what are we doing? I know. Okay. I know this is the new me, Gabe. I'm a little, well, no, I'm not, I'm not more forgiving. Um, but I was going to say that and then I realized the people around me would Generous probably disagree take. with that. Yeah, no, it's not. But it, come on, you have to admit when you think somebody's one way, and then you see the complete direct opposite of that. I don't know. I agree. With, I agree. Beetle, I agree. It's a delightful surprise. Yeah. He's not a robot. He's not dead inside. He's still or, got some stuff going on. Or, or he just updated his iOS and he's been reprogrammed <laughs> as like a mildly more personable version of the same person he always was. Like, I don't know why you're buying. You of all people should not be buying Tom Brady 2.0. I'm buying it a little bit. Like, I'm not out here with jerseys and Tampa Bay crap all over my house by any stretch. I just, it's nice to see someone who has dominated life in almost any way you possibly could actually seem to be enjoying it versus dominating, but almost as if you're, you can't even stop for five seconds to smell the flowers. I, I don't know. I, I, I respect that. I think the successful people in the world sometimes get too caught up in wanting, wanting, wanting that it doesn't seem like they actually enjoy any of it. And then you're either too old to care or you die and then you never had a chance to live. And so I think watching him live and enjoy it, doing what he's doing at that age. Besides, as people who are getting older, it's nice to see that he's still going. Well, and, and he, he can't kids. enjoy food, most foods. Well, that, okay, so, so that's a reason right there why I'll never enjoy be something. best friends with him. What's it like? To, ugh, yeah, that part I don't get. The not eating. What is it? Don't, doesn't eat like, strawberries? Yeah, strawberries, strawberries is the one. Oh, it's, is it just nightshades? <laughs> is tomatoes a nightshade? I think what's it a, is. What's a Wait, nightshade? He doesn't what? eat tomatoes or he does? <laughs> you should eat tomatoes if you're a dude. No, he doesn't I'm eat tomatoes because sure. they're too acidic. So you're, right, for canker sores. Italian. Like, what What would you even eat with Tom Brady? He won't eat carbs. But I think that's the point. Oh, no. We're not hanging out, yeah. but we're happy that's that what he's... Saying. There's a modicum of never go to a, restaurant. a robot's life. Yeah, eating is like what separates us from the rest of the world. It's the best thing we have going as humans is that we get to eat what we get to eat, which is everything. Mm-hmm. And we have chefs that had made it, made it better. Tomatoes on a... Like, first of all, he should be eating tomatoes for his prostate. Uh, I read that on the internet. I stand by it. I've been saying it for 20 years. Lycopenes. That's all I know. But if you are a prone to canker sores, don't eat tomatoes. Yeah. I don't want to be friends with him. I'm just saying I live in a time where I actually tolerate Tom Brady. I never saw that coming. And that's well, weird can, to me. 
So. It's very weird. Can I ask you then about the guy who seemed to be living his best life on Sunday that I, I, I have to admit, some little part of me wondered if you saw the moment that Cam Newton got in the end zone and went nuts. Yeah. Did you have any reaction to that while watching uh, I had it zone? on Red Zone. Shout out Scott Hansen. Um, I was putting up Christmas trees because <laughs> why not? <laughs> and all of a sudden, I just heard, I'm back. And I turned to the screen as he ripped his helmet off and then got the whistle call, but doesn't matter. It was totally worth it. And I just sort of, as I was putting the tree up, like whispered to myself, I'm back too, Cam Newton. I'm back too. <laughs> now, my back... Not quite the same as his. He literally touched the ball like twice and resulted in 14 points. But it was it was awesome. Between his comeback and Adele's comeback, um, and then obviously this podcast launching, which is I don't know where you rank it. It's like maybe one, like two, one, three. It's a pretty big weekend for everybody. And Cam Newton, it's I like when people who some people have shut out or have decided that they're done sort of comes back because he obviously knew he wasn't done. Um, he just needed somebody to give him a shot. And the NFL being what it is, injuries will always allow somebody to have another shot at something. Uh, and he did. And he made the most of it. And the the welcome seemed to be very warm. He's making a good amount of money to do it. And I, I wish him nothing but the best. I think he's good for the NFL. I think his shenanigans are sometimes, you know, eye rolling. But if it wasn't for characters like Cam Newton and the like, sports would be so boring. Like, so boring between his fashion and his the way he just sort of carries himself and then also delivered yesterday i thought that was a last laugh for a lot of people that maybe don't like cam newton i mean it was set up so <laughs> perfectly for him to come back with the it injury was, and he's coming back on. and i actually didn't see did he have a good post game press outfit presser i yes he did well yes i mean he do you think he had that outfit waiting yes like when he was like, I know I'm coming back eventually. Now, he couldn't have planned it was going to be in Carolina. There's no way he thought that was coming. But yes. Also, I think he played Arizona like his first game ever. And then yeah, it was just a weird, it's a weird comeback for him in the best of ways. Um, and I wish him nothing but the best. Aww. So, Beetle. I'm too twice, nice now. This might not work. Twice we'll get there. we worked on, um, we worked on a Madden cover vote back in, in our yes. previous lives. And Cam was a finalist two times yeah, and lost both times and yet somehow won the day. As I recall uh, being on stage when he lost to Richard Sherman, right. he still stole the show and the whole crowd went nuts for him. And he was actually one of the cooler people to be around behind the scenes from yeah. my memory. I don't know if he's actually a cool dude, but he seemed cool at the, I mean, at the time. I don't know anything about him necessarily. And look, maybe I'm forgetting something. I, I, I really don't. There was never anything that I thought made him just an unlikable. He's charismatic as hell, right? He looks great. He dresses like a rock star. Um, these are all things that if you're trying to sort of stand out in a league of hundreds and then in sports in general, so thousands, uh, yeah, he's definitely a name that I think pops. But – yeah, I, first of all, <laughs> those Madden. Remember Peyton Hillis? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. We had like Michael Vick, Peyton Hillis was the final one year. And I wouldn't talk to Michael Vick for two hours on live television. Like I wouldn't even look at him. It was really weird. Only to fe see him at a UFC fight years later and him ask me why. <laughs> it was just like. <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, he asked you why? He wasn't sure yeah, why? Yeah, it was a UFC fight. I want to say in Chicago. Um, and I was sitting. This is weird. I was sitting in the front row. Uh, thanks, Dana White. And he was sitting right behind me with like his friends and there was like a tap and I turned around and he asked me or whatever. And I just said, I was like, I like dogs more than I like humans. Always he led have, with that? Have. Like That was his? Yeah, that was it. Wow. I mean, that's, yeah. I, like props to him. Look, look, people, obviously he's had a nice redemption story, I suppose. But th there are certain things I will never get out of the gray on. Um, that happens to be one of them. So yeah, we had him as a final and then I mean, just to think back that Peyton Hillis was in a Madden cover final is just a, what a weird world that whole thing is. I, I think you won it for him. You're, you're, <laughs> you were at that time so anti-Vic that I think you got the probably the worst player ever on the cover of Madden, I think is mostly due to you. I don't like that. That makes me feel bad. No, like, no, like, no. I wasted my powers on something bad. Peyton Wait, Hillis you know what's delightful. weird? He had cowboy that, boots. He was awesome. Yeah, he did. What yeah, he, it was just a. It was bizarre. It was a bizarre 
It's just a bizarre turn of events. But that curse, whether or not that still exists, I have no idea. What has turned into a curse is this whole Peyton Eli Monday night football thing, which to me is one of the best things going on television right now. And when they take breaks during weeks, I, I just I get angry. I get pissed off because first of all, like, what are you doing on a Monday that you can't just keep giving us three hours of gold? But yeah, that's now the new curse, which I kind of I believe in curses. I know some people think that's silly and dumb, but it worked. Yeah. And see, they're on tonight. Peyton and Eli tonight. And what is that? Rams Niners? Rams Niners. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they it's 100 percent real. They got Josh Allen last time. Uh, they, they've got like six uh, pelts yeah. up on the wall right now. Um, it's a lot. And good teams, too. They, they're, they're, it's not like they're bringing on, you know, the guys from the Jets and then they're losing. Like, they're bringing no, on gonna... winning players. Wait, who what minute lose. are we on that Gabe finally got to mention the Jets? I wanted to say no, that over and over myself. For, we, we've got a lot of these to do. I'm a reformed Jets fan now, Beetle. Sorry. You're so, are you a, oh. did you embrace Rams being on Chargers. the West Coast? No. Chargers. Yeah, the, yeah, oh. the Jets of the West. Oh, that's fair. I did see somebody this morning just say Chargers are going to charge. <laughs> yeah, it That's feels right, very though. similar. Yeah, except the quarterback's great. So it's, I can't you believe know. you didn't pick the Rams. I picked the Rams when I lived out there. Nah, super teams, too easy. Didn't want to do it. Yeah, but yeah, I, Dave has a complex. Teams, you know? Yeah, well, as a Jets fan, you're like you're like a you're like the dude from um, Dan Brown novels. I it's like what? the Catholic <laughs> practice of self flagellation. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess. Which does not mean what somebody cut. probably thinks it means right now. So just look it up, you weirdos. Like, oh, it's perverted. It's not perverted. No, it's not. It's not at all. Joe Rogan. I just thought of Joe Rogan when I said it. <laughs> Who, by the way, hell of a podcaster, apparently. Oof. So there He's you the go. competition now, Beetle. Yeah, that's a right. direct that's right. competition right now. <laughs> you don't yeah, need so, him um, for you. I just, I just going to say that. Yeah. All right. So Chargers fan. Fair enough. Okay, I'll give you that. Well, they had Russell Wilson on, jinxed. Uh, you could even go, you could go cross sports. They had LeBron James on, hasn't really played a game since. Mm -hmm. um, who else? Like, I'm trying to remember. Travis Kelsey got jinxed. Travis uh, Kelsey disappeared. Yeah, then he, he now he's back because the Chiefs are back, but he was out for. Settle down. He was, well, okay. That's what okay. people are saying on Monday. That's uh, what we know that Jared Allen got jinxed. Um, they, they yes. honestly, uh, we'll come up with the names. There was about six of them in a row, and we yeah. got to double check who's on during that Rams Niners game because that's oh, a bad God. omen. Yeah, I, I actually look forward to their guest list. My favorite part so far, you guys tell me yours, but the part that stands out for me the most, I can't believe I'm sitting here talking about former employee, but it's really not because it's like Peyton's project. It's not even really, mm -hmm. yeah. So, was the moment going to commercial when Archie Manning wandered out onto Eli's couch and no one told him that the camera was crotch level and he was wearing shorts mm -hmm. while figuring out how to tweet. And it was my, it was like looking up my dad's shorts and it was just <laughs> such a moment for me. I loved it. And not in a weird, sick way, just in a, what a wholesome father son moment with upshot shorts that I got to see in the rest of them. I love it. I love that family a little bit. There you go. See, that's not a family I used to love. You're really coming around. Who What's knew wrong Archie's with crotch could do that for you? I'm glad I saved my money because if this version of me, this this version of me I might not ever get paid again in sports. It's too nice. Yeah, you are you are getting awfully nice and forgiving. Yeah. I feel like each of the people I expected you to tee off on in this show, you've been kind to. Um, yeah. We, we, but we, you know what? You'll have your opportunity because since uh since this podcast is sort of taking shape we're going to do a, a game in our second segment oh thank called, god what else did i miss okay thank god we have a bunch of stories really made to get under your skin beetle I, well or maybe not we'll see i know uh, but it's that's your, that's might love your it. chance to take the driver out and really tee in okay i'm ready is that happening now i don't know it's your show you get to decide that. is this where do we take breaks in podcasts like are there commercials yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, you're going to yeah. read them, in fact. So do I, okay, is this like, oh my God, not only have I not thrown into a commercial in two years, but I don't even know if they had commercials in podcasts. I'm like Najee Harris. I didn't know you could tie. And here I have no idea. We'll that, back to that. Okay, um, so this is the end of our A block in our first ever podcast. <laughs> we are going to have a B block after this. <laughs> Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows, you're watching sports highlights on your phone, and you've got your neighbor's best friend's login for the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love 
without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before. So you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. The best part? There's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. It's fall, which means football season is in full swing. And for many of us, there's no better way to enjoy the games than by having some skin in the game, which is why BetMGM remains the exclusive betting partner of The Athletic. And as a fan of The Athletic, you can bet $10 to win $150, plus a free three-month subscription or extension to your subscription with The Athletic when you bet with BetMGM using our promo code. Just sign up at betmgm.com and use the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout to take advantage of this special offer from the king of sportsbooks. That's bet 10 bucks to win 150 plus three months free from The Athletic at betmgm.com and using the promo code THEATHLETICPOD at checkout. New customer offer. Visit betmgm.com for terms and conditions. 21 years of age or older to wager. Arizona, Colorado, Washington, D.C., Indiana, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Nevada, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, and West Virginia only. Excludes Michigan disassociated persons. Please gamble responsibly. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP in Arizona, 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado, Washington, D.C., Nevada, Wyoming, and Virginia, 1-800-270-7117 for confidential help in Michigan, 1-800-GAMBLER in Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia, 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. Call or text the Tennessee red line 800-889-9789 in Tennessee or call 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. So you're taking the wheel? Is that how this works? No, no, I'm just teeing you up with some other things that you might have missed, since that's the name of the show. Oh, right, right. (laughs) Do you want to tell people the name of the show in the region? This show is called What Did I Miss, which is going to be something at least every single day for the rest of our lives. And this particular day, it was two years worth. But now that I'm all caught up, it's just day by day, like the rest of y'all. All All right, well, we got a busy weekend, so let me give you a few more stories you might have missed uh, and see your reaction. So Teddy Bridgewater was criticized for making zero attempt at a tackle... (laughs) After the Eagles returned to fumble on Sunday. Uh, meanwhile, DK Metcalf tried to secretly enter a Seahawks huddle after being ejected from the game. So, Beetle, which do you ID with more? The doing extra or the not doing too much? Oh, well, personally, not doing too much. Uh, I'm a big believer in do as little as you need to do as long as the check's cash. But... From a viewer standpoint, doing too much. It reminds me of when Bobby Valentine tried to sneak back in with the mustache thing and like after he can inject. <laughs> like there's great. something about that that's childlike and innocent and also hilarious to watch a grown up do. So uh, viewership, doing too much. Personally, I don't want to do that much. Okay. I'm, with, I'm with Teddy. <laughs> it's not in my job description. <laughs> I mean, I realize this is mostly uh, an audio medium for people, but please go look up Teddy Bridgewater allaying oh. this Darius Slay. Rex Ryan said this morning, I think, that he would just bench him. <laughs> <laughs> bench him as a quarterback because he didn't Too tackle. Much. Uh, yeah, that's not his job, man. No, those not gloves aren't for tackling. That's, a, that's what we uh, call a business decision. Yeah, right? Like, I got stuff to do, bro. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Guys, I realized, by the way, I hope I can say this. Um, I have one of those MSNBC chairs. When you squirt around in it, it sounds like I'm doing something that I'm not doing. I just want, I'm just, this, this could be a lot like of shows. Did you just around in it? Listen to the sound. Wait. Uh, well, it's not really doing it right now, but it makes some. Uh, like making whoopee? Yeah. No, no, not like that. No. More like going like, to the bathroom? Yeah, more like that. Ah, it's all one or the other. By the way, why do I keep listening into my microphone? That's what <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything, but I hope I'm that glad stops soon. You called yourself out. <laughs> so many things to learn. Uh, yeah, we can't hear it, but thanks for bringing it to our attention. Now I will only listen. Well, to that. just preemptively, if it sounds like someone farted on this show, it's my chair. Yes. Well, I've got two pugs in the room. Just blame it on them. Okay, I will deal. <laughs> uh, all right, listen, Carson Wentz uh, definitely played Sunday while his wife was maybe going to go into labor. Um, he was very clear that that was going to be what happened um, and that he would play next Sunday also. Now it appears that, I, and I hope all is well, that she's induced labor and mm. so he, he does not have this conflict. Um, but does any of this decision making by Carson Wentz change whatever opinion you may already have of Carson Wentz? Uh, as a feminist, uh, I don't really care because my father was not in the delivery room when I was born and I turned out 
completely normal with zero emotional hangups and absolutely no issue in loving someone and being loved back. So <laughs> no, it's going to be a problem. And I don't know what child this is for them. Um, if it's, if it's not the first one, you've seen one, you've seen them all, you know, it's the second. I'll be back in about a year or two. That's when the kid becomes a kid right now. It's just a thing. <laughs> is that the worst spoken to someone who's never had a child? I would maybe probably hold it against him if I'm his wife, but I think in the long run, it's just an hour or two. Am I wrong? Do, I feel like this is wrong, but I really believe this. Well, Gabe is the athletes, only parent on this show. Yeah. yeah. But I'm a man, so I'm disqualified. That's well, had, right. were you there for all of your kids' Well, births? I got two at one time, and I wasn't going to miss that. Well, that's a bonus. Yeah. I think if I'd, if I'd I, missed the third, I don't really think it would have been a big deal. You don't think it would have been? Have you not discussed this before telling us? I feel like you should ask first. I don't think my wife's going to listen this far into the podcast. That's a great um, point. So I, I think, wouldn't listen this far into the podcast. <laughs> I think I don't. I, I think I would have been uh, playing in an NFL football game would have been just enough of an excuse not to be there. I think. I think it will only come up in fights because in fights is when you go for the jugular. Great if point. you are, you know are good at fighting. But also that they were playing the Jags. Can we talk about that? It's not like, oh, sorry, I'm not going to make it. We're playing the Super Bowl champions. It's yeah, we're playing Urban Meyer's Jags. <sighs> Do we know if it's his first kid? It's not his first. Second, kid. second. Oh, that thing right. That's it's, it's right like out. a weird declaration to me. Like, let me draw yeah. this line in the sand. Yeah, I, I, I just... hadn't considered the Jags point. That's a really interesting angle. Like it's just yeah, perspective. See, I like, didn't even think about that. His wife had to be it's... like, buddy, you're like a 11 and a half point favorite. They don't need you. Jacob Eason <laughs> or somebody can take this one. They scored. Yeah, like but no one wants to week. admit like I, and no one wants to admit they're replaceable, especially in like that league. No way, man. Can't miss a gig. Yeah. You cannot miss a gig. OK, so we're, we're saying no change in your opinion of uh, Carson. Wentz. Mm, no, no uh, change. Next right. up. I don't think you know this. The Flying Beatles of UTSA are still undefeated. They're 10 and 0. <laughs> One could claim they're the best team in Texas. Do you oh. want credit? Um, God, I wish I could take credit. I, I have such a guilty conscience sometimes cuz like when I go to Spurs games, a lot of people are like roadrunners and they have this it's like this or like I think it's like this. I think this goes out. Now, people have to understand is yeah, my diploma is technically from UTSA, but I went there for like a semester um, and I never really was in class and there was no football. So it's just all brand new to me. But I can say that this town is like super happy and stoked and tailgating's become a thing. And that coach has really won a lot of hearts over. And yeah, I would definitely say they're the best college team in the state because whatever's happening in Austin right now is a debacle. So it's weird. It's weird that San Antonio college football is the best in the state. I never thought I'd say that. Good for them. Yeah. They should embrace it. Texas all-time terrible losing streak right now. Worse since the 50s. A&M I mean. lost to Ole Miss. Baylor beat Oklahoma, which a lot of people are happy about, except like their season's basically done. They got two losses. You, I think it's you guys. Oh, no. It's a, I think it's 100%. And, and not only that, but you throw in the fact that all those other programs are like sexier and more glamorous. I think it's awesome. It's the whole – it's a very San Antonio on-brand sort of – no one's paying attention to us. Everyone thinks we're boring. And then here they are just kind of crushing life. Like I root for this. I root for chaos in sports. And I think this is one of those. So maybe you want to stake your claim, plant your flag. Maybe you <laughs> want to be out front of this one as one of the preeminent uh, I can't. alum. I can't even like, that's what I'm saying is they, they were like, come to this. And I, I always feel like a fraud. I'm like, guys, I I barely was there. I, I can't even tell you the name of a professor. Like, I, I know nothing. I was in and out. <laughs> oh, that's never stopped college football players from, you know, <laughs> There we go. Yep, that is true. That's exactly right. That's true. I'm just going to deck myself out in, like, road rudder gear, top to bottom. <laughs> can, can you go back, uh, again, visual medium uh, or audio medium? What is the logo that you're doing with your hand? It's what is like that thing? The, I think it's this. So this is the discussion I've had. And I think I was corrected because this is Hang 10, right? Okay. And then so I think it's fingers forward and we were trying to figure out why. And the only thing we come up with is this looks like a road runner. I'm probably wrong. And your I thumb is the Google head. It, right. And then the tail is like. Meh, meh. So you're which side are you saying? it? <laughs> like, I think this would be the head, right? This is great the tail sticks up on a road runner. 
You're, so for, for people oh, right. That, this is audio, isn't it? Describe right. this for people <laughs> so right. they can play along. If you're driving, be careful, but go ahead. Be yes, please. Explain please. what this looks like. So it's basically the hang 10 symbol, which I can say I think everyone knows. And so if you look at the hang 10 symbol, your thumb as it juts out is sort of what the head of the roadrunner would be, while the pinky is the tail that kind of sticks up and then runs across the street. Because all we know about roadrunners is cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I would have assumed it was the opposite. I would have assumed the okay. pinky is the head and the thumb. That is, is an tail. argument I've heard. Are roadrunners real? Look. Is that a dumb question? Oh gosh, yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah, is it? So okay. are jackalopes. What's a jackalope? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Is it a bird? Is a roadrunner a bird? It's a bird. Yeah, it's a bird. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Can it fly? Gonna... <laughs> I don't think it flies. I think they just run. Oh my God, are we stupid? Yes. yes. Well, we, we have a podcast, so we. I mean, well, actually, that doesn't. I also say have much. seven computers around me right now, but I refuse to Google it. I refuse. Mm -mm. And a okay, hand then computer. Don't... <laughs> hand computer. <laughs> I just want to speculate. <laughs> uh, don't Google anything about this next story in case you didn't see this. Especially, don't Google pronunciation of this man's name, which I'm about to butcher. You okay. can do it. The most famous player uh, in America, Kristen Pulisic. Pulisic? I think it's Pulisic. 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 Oh boy, I've messed up every vowel, every God, syllable you're the of that. Worst. Pulisic. Worst uh, he wore a man in the mirror shirt under his jersey or kit, if you're paying there attention. There you go. Yeah. Oh God. Uh, in a, a win over El Tri, Mexico. Um, Me this was because a, a Mexico's goalie said Mexico has been a mirror in which they want to see themselves, meaning us, uh, reflect, and they want to copy. So I guess which that's I want to say like, is like not wrong, like. In the head-to-head, -head, we're not good. We know that. Right. No. That's the but, heel, isn't it? But the t-shirt, after he scored the goal, is a troll. An all-time yeah. troll. So I think the question is, which part of this story makes you most proud to be an American? <laughs> well, uh, I always think Man in the Mirror, and I think Michael Jackson, um, and a great song. But I also think if there's anyone who deserves to troll, I mean, the dude is one of the few, if not one of like a handful of Americans playing overseas in the EPL. And um, probably the reason why, yeah, I, I just, I'm okay with it. Also, when there's a team that's had your number, like this is when you troll, isn't it? It doesn't mean like long-term, this is going to be the last word by any stretch of the imagination. Because as we all know, the women's soccer team here has always been better, but maybe there will come a day where that won't be the case. And I'm all for trolling. I'm well, so my, my favorite part of the story, after you say that, is he says in the post game, quote, I'm not trying to cause controversy. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, when you go like this so that we can make sure we, because we would never know what you had on. Correct. We would never know what was on under there. You could have had on a tattoo or whatever that said F Mexico and we would have, we would have never been the wiser. But instead you're like, meh. So yeah, it's a troll. And look, if I'm going to be pretty cocky if I'm him. So yeah, I'm good with it. Now just keep doing that and not be embarrassed at the end of this whole ride. That's the whole point. God, when is that? Is that next year? World Cup? Yeah. November, Holy December, 2022. It's going to be here soon, guys. It's going to be here soon. In Cutter. In yeah. Cutter. Weren't you just there like 20 minutes ago? I was just there. I got back yesterday. Yep. That's, I don't know how you're awake right now. I'm not. But we can all go to sleep right after this. That's the good news about podcasts too, I guess. I'm yeah. learning. You can do whatever you want when you're a podcaster. You record when you want. You release when you want. Who knows? You don't have to wear pants. No. Don't have to shout. Like all of this is fantastic. All of it. Uh, we're talking about trolls. I want to. I want to bring up this troll, um, Beetle. I don't know if you would have seen this. A, a carny. Is that still a term you're allowed to use? We'll find out. Okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> nice being on the show with you guys. No, That's you know what? There's a down. show on ID Channel called like Carney Murders. So yeah, you're good. All right. Well. A man at a carnival uh, running a concession tried to troll who I assume he did not realize was Cardinals pitcher Adam Wainwright oh, when no. Adam only bought two balls to throw at the dunk tank clown. And he was like, oh, only two? And he was like, yeah, I think I'm going to be okay. And of course, he drilled the target on the first throw and the clown went down. <laughs> so my obvious That's question so is, why down. aren't clowns canceled yet? <laughs> Right? We've tried to cancel every other thing on the planet. Um, first of all, that's such a good moment. I love stories like that when 
especially like a baseball guy. No, not, they're not always recognizable. I'd say most of them aren't actually. Um, so yeah, that's a really good sort of moment for him. But yeah, clowns, I can't think of a nice thing to say about a clown. Not one. Not one positive about clowns. They're not funny. They're terrifying. They're creepy. They make me sad. Boom. <laughs> trifecta. So yeah, they're canceled for me. They have been. Okay. I'm all sad on clowns. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't let clowns near my kids. I, I don't. There's Shouldn't. no need for clowns. Although maybe they wouldn't be scared of them if you sort of embraced clowns. But we can just do all the clown things without all the makeup and the, the, the nonsense. Just be funny. Physical that, comedy. Yeah. yeah. That's fair. Well, I just don't even. Th- I mean, when's the last funny clown? There, like, I, there aren't many. Oh, I know. Like in uh, in Living Color, didn't Damon Wayans do a good clown? Yeah, but the joke was oh, that he was like that. a drunk, inappropriate to be around children clown. Right. It was on brand for clowns. Okay, fair enough. Pink clown. <laughs> Pink uh, clown. Last thing I've got to bounce off you, which you're going to have to pretend you didn't see and send to us. Um, <laughs> Team, so. we're making a podcast. We're, we're oh, the sorry. producers. All right, edit Magic. point. Uh, edit and... Hey, last one, Beetle. I, you definitely didn't see this. Mm, okay. no, this one's going to come out of left field, but here goes. Uh, some MMA fighter whose name I will butcher suffered a ruptured testicle in training and now has one ball. Uh, nice. But according to the headline about this, he can still, quote, give birth. Is this a massive win for science? Uh, that is, A, should have been on every page, every channel, every everything this morning. And one... If a man loses a ball, he can give birth. That is something that we should be talking about a lot more. Yep. But I think the interesting part about this was that Paige then went down the rabbit hole. Oof. And what was the discovery about this? <laughs> well, so you sent it to us uh, in the process of like 10 minutes before we were started making this rundown. And Morning, I couldn't remember and couldn't find your text. So I just Googled MMA ball birth. And instead, what I got was like 10 results of other MMA fighters losing balls. So this seems to be a bit of an epidemic in the sport. So yeah, I'm not sure where to go with that. But I don't know about the birth part. Only one had the birth, birthing. Yeah, the only he's the only one that I think can still, he can give birth now, which is great. Love where do they keep him. the extra balls? Really do. Are like, there's a lot oh. of extra testicles sitting around somewhere. Well, I think they're. Sort of. Do you get to keep it? Do they keep like, them? Keep, that, like I would want to keep it in a jar. Would you? You'd keep it, right, Gabe? Um, pass it down to your. I kids don't know. I, I feel like I weighed in on the on the Carson Wentz birth story when nobody <laughs> needed my. I feel like you guys should just talk about the testicle. Record. I think I would Once keep again, my ball. I would definitely keep it. I might even make it into some sort of a jewelry type thing, <laughs> or like just a Christmas ornament. Right. Oh, like you know, like you like you my first ball. <laughs> <laughs> 2021 my balls first christmas Twenty. <laughs> oh i wish i had balls sometimes Gross. oh thanks gabe <laughs> okay well we made a podcast i think that's Whew. kind of it um that was exhausting can, actually can i bring up one more thing that's probably a good place to end beetle Oof. when you sent us the screen grab of the story instead of the link hello just send know. us the link next time <laughs> You and sent computer. us a screen grab of it on your phone or computer. It was on your computer. And right. we saw your your little like notifications. Oh, and yeah. If, if I read that correctly, oh, you no. have, and this honestly is giving me so much anxiety just saying this out loud. I hope I misread it. You have 537 unread text messages. That sounds right. <laughs> yes. Holy. Like, <laughs> I don't. But that's, you have to understand, like, on my phone, okay, for example, on my phone right now, I only have 20 unread text messages. The computer has so many more because you don't really ever look at texts on your, like, for example, on my computer, I have 3,000 unread emails, and here I have no idea. So yeah, I'm never going to clean that out. It's probably why my computers don't last long. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong, but. But you're like <laughs> an instant reply when Paige says yeah. something about. Adele and Rich Paul, you're like, here goes. I got no, a response. No. Imagine. Imagine how much I don't like the people whose responses that they've never received from me. 
This is a huge, huge L for 537 people. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I kind of want to be like, can we just do a quick scroll and just, like, pick one random and respond? God, yeah, no. Yeah, let's respond. Like a text Come from on. six Wait, months ago. Let me see, like, one. I mean, these are so old, like. This could be our first guest. Whoever oh, you're God. thinking of, you yes. could reply to some cool person. Oh, wait, hold like, on. Hey, want to come on? I got a new podcast. They're like, what time for dinner? And you respond six months later with, would you like to be a guest on my podcast? <laughs> Can't wait. I have a podcast. <laughs> in, in, my, in my defense, there's a chunk of them from like birthday time, which you never respond to all those because mm-hmm. that's silly. Um, uh, How yeah, many are like DoorDash? From July 5th, 2021. Like, I, you know, I, these are... I don't even know what this is about. You got some famous friends. You're not going to call the, anyone out right now? What's the furthest? No way. No, but Gabe, you'll like this. Do have a Bob Lee one from June. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a Let's good get one. Bob Lee on the show. <laughs> well, we have to get Bob Lee on the show. He, Bob, okay, are you yeah, listening? That's, that's, Bob. Oh, he's not listening, but I'll text him. <laughs> he's here. Bob, we're going to be sending you this. Here's the, here's the offer, Bob. Bob, I think I, I managed to read some of those headlines. I, admirably it, it set up the conversation well but you of all you would never have butchered christian pulisic's name never like no I God, sucker I so i'll sit this one out the b block of any show bob lee wants is his and yes. we'll just get the heck out of the way and he can tell you all the things you missed i won't even like i'm just gonna sit here while bob, i could listen to bob lee just like read dub lists i'd be happy with that this is we're just actively trying to give this podcast to bob yeah this is Bob's going to be the first podcast. This is going to be the first time somebody just gives their podcast away on the first episode <laughs> to Bob Lee. <laughs> what did I miss with Michelle Beadle by Bob Lee? You missed that I gave it back and I gave it to Bob Lee. So there you go. I love that dude. Uh, would you like to tell people in the oh. final moments of this show um, about uh, it was really our first encounter with Bob Lee? Do you remember this? Yes. So Bob Lee, I think most people probably outside looking in again, um, have sort of this, like he's very serious and he's one of the pillars of Sports Center and ESPN, was there from day one, you know, that just a respected man in the business. And when we started Sports Nation, we had um, a little pod in the newsroom and obviously we were the loud, obnoxious pod while everybody else was doing actual work. And we would just tell stories and be loud and do jokes. And then one day, I don't remember if there was some sort of a punchline, Gabe. You probably remember better than I do. But all of a sudden, we heard a and we're like, what? And we turn around, and Bob's got his phone, and he's got one of those like things where it goes, and it's a little app. <laughs> and he was just sort of joining us in our stupidity. And it was such a moment of like, oh, my God, I love Bob Lee. Because I never in a million years would have thought this guy would have even – listened to us much less joined us it was awesome we thought he was angrily tuning us out for six months well yep. the, the pods was essentially this Hate podcast us. if you've just listened to the end of this podcast you've now been in a sports nation pod since <laughs> 2009 for the last 45 minutes and bob lee had to sit next to this crap while he was making <laughs> otl <laughs> like an actual show. It was like about stuff. Pulitzers while this <laughs> crap was going on over his shoulder. And he turned around with some app and just went <laughs> right at us. And we thought he wanted to kill us, but no, he was just adding a joke. And from that day forward, he was like a cousin of Sports Nation. Yeah. He was awesome. Just a dry mofo, and I loved him so much. All right. So respond <laughs> to that text and invite him on the show. Okay, I will. Maybe he'll be the first guest. We don't know. We've got two more shows to do this week and then My every God, week we after this forever and ever. Can we not just cut this one up and make three out of it? Good idea. We'll talk to the editor right. about that. Well, I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, uh, we right. did it. Wrap it's it up first somehow. One. I don't know what, what how you do that, but please end um, it. Please be gentle. This was our first time. We'll see you guys Wednesday. <laughs> like, like, comment, something, whatever. Oh, wait. So, yeah, I guess you follow us and then listen and like it or comment. Is that how, are, that's how the analytics yeah. of this work? They know what to okay. do. They know that So even helps. if they write a negative comment, that still counts, no, don't right? Don't do that. Don't do that. But it's engagement. It's bad engagement. We don't want oh, that. Okay. Well, all right. So then don't write negative comments. Write something really nice. Thank you so much. We will, uh, we will try again on Wednesday. <laughs>